welcome to another episode of History with Liz. That's me. It's just me. Today, we're doing more sailing sayings that are still used today. So you didn't realise it, but we use a lot of these nautical sayings that were created hundreds of years ago in our everyday life. Mental. So let's get to it, shall we? And grow more knowledge. knowledge. Feeling blue. Now Stacey, I've decided I ain't gonna go out and make Gavin jealous. I may be feeling blue about the split, but I ain't gonna go out. No, I'm gonna stay in and watch Gossip Girl instead. <laughs> feeling blue is a term to describe nowadays as feeling sad or down in the dumps. It originates when ships lost their captains for whatever reason. And I don't mean just lost, that they were like down in the kitchen or something like that. When their captain died, they would raise a blue flag when they came into port to signal that their captain was no more. And sometimes they would even paint a blue strip along the band of their boat to signal this as well. Toe the line. Oh, Jeffries. Glad you could make it. I hear that you're here for a disciplinary. Late, late, um, throwing a chair across the room, exposing yourself. Listen here, Jeffries, this is the third time in one week you've been brought to the headmaster's office. You better toe the line, you little. We use this expression now meaning to, to behave, to do as you're told, to toe the line. Get yourself in order. Back then, it was used on ships when the crew were being inspected. This was usually done barefoot as well. They would all toe the line and the line would be a seam on deck, like between the planks, and they would all line up side by side with their toes touching that seam perfectly. Ready for their inspection. Loose cannon. The turn of men, hey. Uncle Keith. Is, is Aunt Shirley going to be all right? Come on, Kay. Come on, dance. Your aunt is a, a special woman, little Timmy. Yes, love, I'll be, I'll be there. Right there. Right there, love. She's a loose cannon, your aunt. Never get married. We use this expression now to describe someone who is unpredictable and rash. You can't predict what they're going to do or maybe something they, they act haphazardly or irrationally, slightly dangerous maybe. Or it could just describe your Auntie Shirley at an open bar. It originates when cannons actually became loose on ships, when they used to come free from their ties and lines and used to go all around the place. And you can imagine on a moving ship, that is not going to be pleasant and it's going to be rather dangerous and difficult to control. And that's where it comes from. Turning a blind eye. Gemma, I am telling you, I am not turning a blind eye to his behaviour anymore. I have had it. I love myself more than that. Yet yeah, fair enough, he's like with my cousin. I turned a blind eye to that, right? Okay, because she's like my second cousin, right? But I ain't turned a blind eye to my sister. No, I am telling you, I am not turning a blind eye to that that behaviour anymore, right? No, I am not. Nowadays, we use this expression to, you know, to look the other way. When you don't want to see something, if someone's being naughty, you don't pay attention to it. Turn in the eye originated at the Battle of Copenhagen in 1801, when Lord Nelson held his telescope to his wrong eye. He only had one eye, so he held it to, let's just pretend it's this one. And he pretended that he couldn't see the signal from his commander saying for them to stop attacking the enemy. So we carried on turning a blind eye and inevitably won the battle. You go, girl. Touch and go. My fellow scholars and gentlemen, I am proud to let you know the operation was a success. It was touch and go. We have created another Liz. 
Rise, Liz. Hello. In today, we use the term touch and go to describe something that's very on and off. You could say in a hospital, it's very touch and go. On ships, it was used to describe the moment of when the ship would touch a sandbar, become lodged, and then suddenly break free. So on the ship, they would say, oh, it was touch and go there. See, touch and go. Which is quite like this video right now. Dressing down. And you know what else I'm going to do, Gemma? I'm going to give him a right dressing down. I'm going to tell him, I'm going to tell him his behaviour. I ain't going to put up with it. He's going to get such a dressing down, he won't believe. Today we use the term dressing down uh, when you're telling someone off, when they've done something naughty. So you're giving them peace of your mind. Back then, it was used when they used to take the sails down to treat them with oil and wax to keep them good and proper. It really doesn't mean that anymore, does it? Let the cat out the bag. Ibruf, hey, Ibruf, hey, did you wear, did you wear about Gavin? Oh, mate, I bloody did, I did. Who let the cat out the bag, eh? Who let that slip? Do you know? Nah, 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 mate. Oh, I ain't got a clue. I, I ain't got a uh, clue. Mm. We use this expression now to describe when someone has exposed a secret accidentally or on purpose, but they've said something that they probably shouldn't have said. It originates from when they used to bring out the cat and nine tails, which is a whip with nine strips of leather, sometimes with beads to make, or knots, to make it even more painful when they used to flog someone. They used to take it out of the bag, well, to flog someone. Simple, and not very nice. Slush fund. Everyone thinks Granny's just lovely. Tea and custard creams for the don't know. Is that Granny has a little slush fund and she's going to Cuba. <laughs> Kiss your inheritance goodbye, you. Slush fund in today is a secret stash of money. But back then it originated from when the cooks on ships used to keep the fatty parts of the meals, go on land and sell them. He would then take the money and split it. Fly by night. Hey mate, hey mate. Guess what? I did it. It was a bit of a fly by night, right? But I totally got the old woman's savings. It the old hag. Fly by night today kind of means something that was done quickly and haphazardly. Back then it originates from when they used to sail at night time with a shortened crew only using one large sail so it was easier to manage and it could be quite dangerous so fly by night. Under the weather. So like <sighs> I used this house about yesterday, I'm feeling a bit under. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I'm feeling a bit under the weather kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Today we use the expression under the weather to describe when you're feeling unwell or poorly. Not quite yourself. Back in the day of sailing and pirates, that actually meant the side of the ship that bore the worst side of the wind and the weather. So to avoid the bad weather, the sailors would literally go underneath where their cabins were to escape the bad weather. Under the weather. These sayings all are quite literal, but they're very interesting how we use them today. A long shot. So like, so like I uh, share and single now and uh, I think I'm going to try it myself, you know. Try my look. I'm going to try my look. It's a long shot, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to ask her out. A long shot today means when something was unlike, it's unlikely to happen. Dating Stacey is a long shot. She's way out of your league. That sort of thing. But back in the day when cannons weren't very good, they didn't really meet their mark. So when they did, they would call it a long shot, something not usual. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video, found it interesting. It was lots of fun to do. So if you enjoyed it, please, please go and click like and maybe even subscribe. See you next time on another History with Liz. Stay safe. <laughs>